Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to my viewers around the world, and especially here in the Burlington, Vermont area. This ministry comes to you every single Sunday, and I pray that you'll be a blessing not only for yourself, but for the rest of the world. This ministry is called the Hesaba House Church Ministry and the Promises of God. It is a bilingual ministry, and I pray that you will be a blessing today, that God will anoint you and fill you with his spirit and gives you understanding. It has been a very difficult time for a lot of people around the world, including the United States. But I come to let you know that you are here. You are here for a reason, because God has a word for you. And I pray that is 20, this 20 minutes ministry, that you will be filled with understanding and wisdom and knowledge and understanding with God's words. And will help you through all these difficult times that we are living. And that's the hope and prayer, not only myself, but the heavenly father and the Lord Jesus Christ has for you. Bienvenidos a todos. Mi nombre es Pastora Jamona Guadalupe y este ministerio viene de las promesas de este Dios. Yo oro que esta 20 minutos, que el Señor te vaya bendiciendo no solamente para este día, pero para que tu, tu vida a, también a tu familia. Estamos viviendo un tiempo difícil y la batalla no está terminada. Hasta Jesús, antes que Jesús venga. Tenemos que solamente estar aguantando con la palabra de Dios. Y yo oro con la palabra que el Señor tiene para ti en este día. Que te vaya bendiciendo y dándote sabiduría y entendimiento en tu vida. Por este tiempo que estamos viviendo para ti y su, suma, y su familia. Este ministerio es en español, también en inglés. Antes de ir para la oración, vamos para el libro de los Samuel, capítulo 146. Beloved, before we go into prayer, let's go to the Psalm 146. And the word reads, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord my soul. I will praise the Lord with all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigners and sustains the uh, fatherless and the widows, but he is frustra he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever, your God of Zion for all generations. Amen and amen, amen to that. Bendición, bendición, la palabra de Dios. Vamos para oración. Let's go into prayer. Holy God, in the name of Jesus Christ, you have made this day a blessing. It is a gift that comes from the Lord in you, blessed Father. Glorify yourself in this moment. Open up the eyes to your people. Open up their hearts to your people. Remove every stumbling block that is in their hearts. 
forgive us for our sins against you. As I stand between you and your people, blessed Father, I pray that the words that I speak and the meditation of my heart with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be a blessing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy God, Jesus Christ, that you gave your life for your church. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. It is a wonderful day. You know why it's wonderful? Because you are here. You are here today because God made this day possible. He made it possible that you and your family are able to hear the word of God. Yes, the devastation that has happened in the United States, the devastation that is happening in Gaza, the devastation that is happening in Lebanon, the devastation is happening in, in Israel. The devastation is happening in Ukraine and Russia, beloved. But God wants you to hold on. And today's topic is, your God is my God. Your God is my God. That is a topic that I'm going to be bringing to you. Your God is my God. We are the children of Abraham. But God wants you to know that he is the God that created all things. He created us. And he wants us to know who he is and the love and compassion that he has for us. United States have gone through horrible time during this time of climate warming. The changing Tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, fire. But he wants you to know he's still in control. Many of you have lost loved ones, have lost loved ones. And believe me, God does grieve. And I let you know, I'm going to show you how God grieves. Because he has given us Jesus Christ, but we're going to go to, we're going to go to the Hebrew text. It's the Old Testament. It's right after the judges, and I'm going to read to you from cap chapter one, the book of Ruth. Vamos para el libro de los viejo testamento. Capítulo 1, versículo 6 hasta el capítulo 1 de Ruth. Ay, señor. Hasta 9. Vamos a leer. Y la palabra dice, and the word reads from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 6 to 9. When Naomi heard in Moab, that the Lord has come to the aid of his people by providing food for them. She and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. When two of the daughters-in-laws, she left the place where she has been living and set out on the road Will, that would take them to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to the two daughters in law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead hus um, house husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in your home of others' husband, of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept out loud and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. Naomi says, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? I am going to have another son. Who could who could become your husband? Who could become your husband? Excuse me. I am going to have any more sons who could come 
to be your husband, to become your husband. Return home, my daughters. I am too old and have another husband. I'm too old to have another husband. Even if I thought that there would be still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and they and then give birth to a son, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried to them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord has turned his hand against me. At that time, they wept out loud and Oprah kissed the mother in law goodbye, but Ruth clinged to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and to her God. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. May the Lord add a blessings to this reading. Let's pray. Bamora. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ. You are the God of God and the Lord of Lord and the Kings of Kings. You are the maker of heaven and earth. At this moment, blessed Father, I ask of you to carve through the hearts of those hearts that are stubborn. Open up their eyes and their ears and their heart. Give them understanding. Blessed Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that he gave his life for us. Remember that, Jehovah. Jesus Christ, these are your people. Give them the understanding through the Holy Spirit that gives understanding to the word of the living God in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. And wherever you die, I will die there. I will be buried there. Wow. That is a dedication. That is, that is uh, unbelievable, the dedication. The love that God has for each and every one of us. God is the God in spite of what go on. Now, let me give you a little history about what's going on. Now, the Moabites, they didn't socialize with the Israelites. There was a famine during that time. And, oh, gee. Okay. Sometimes the hair gets in the way. And there was a famine. So Naomi's husband goes to the area of the Moabites to live there. So Naomi wind up having two children. You can read the whole chapter there, chapter one in the book of Ruth. So Naomi wind up having two children, two sons, and they marry the Moabites people, which at that time, it was against the Israelite to intermarry with another group or another tribe. The daughters, it's, it, they were dedicated to their husbands, the Moabites to the Israelite husband. And eventually, Naomi's husband died. She became a widow. Now, the reason why they moved to that area because there was a great famine. They left Ju Judah and they went to the Moabites to live. And eventually, the two sons that Naomi and her husband had, they passed away too. Now, there were three widows. Naomi was a widow. The two daughters-in-law became widows. But remember, there were Moabites. And the Moabites and the Israelites never connected. They separate each other. They, they didn't marry, they didn't give their daughters to be married to anyone else, only to their own tribes. 
For Naomi heard that in Judah, the God has provided food. So the famine has lifted up from Judah. And she decided to go to, to Judah and live there. But Naomi, Naomi was so miserable. She was so bitter that her three, two sons die. Then her husband died. Then she has these two daughters that are Moabite, Moabites that the Israelites did not get along with. And it was like a taboo. So she decided to go back home. And the beauty of this true story about Naomi, one of the daughter in law the other daughter in law they both cried bitterly. But one of the daughter in law decided, no, I'm not going to leave you. I will go with you. But Naomi insisted, no, 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 no. You go back to your parents' home. You'll find a husband, your bad children, and so on. But Ruth, one of the daughters in law decided, no, your people are my people. Your God is my God. Now remember, they didn't get along, the two tribes. And it would have been a shame for Naomi to go back home with a Moabite daughter in law. So Naomi goes to back home. She is very bitter and so on. But her daughter in law, because of a Moabite, she wind up marry eventually. You can read the chapter, chapter two, chapter one, and so on. It's a very short chapter. But through her insisting, my people will be your people. Now, did he want to mix up the Israelites with the Moabites? It was sort of a taboo and considered to be a sin. But God has a way that does things totally different than us human beings. Because of Ruth, we have Jesus through that family line. She married Bo, Jesse, and so on. David, King David, the family tree. Now remember, both his mother was not something to be proud of. It was a shameful, his mother, both. But because of the insisting, God is able to erase and do things and bring up the seed that he has planted from the very beginning, from Genesis to the time that Jesus was born. God wants us to be very careful when we say, who is the pure blood? Who has the privilege? Here is a Moabite that was forbidden to marry an Israelite and an Israelite to marry a Moabite. Her dedication to Jehovah God, your God will be my God. And because of her love towards her mother and Lord, and because of her protection for her mother-in-law, because she didn't want her mother-in-law to be by herself, because in those days, a woman who did not have a husband would be abused and mistreated. So Ruth became her protector. Ruth became the provider for her mother-in-law. Now Ruth, Naomi, was an Israelite. She came from Judah. But she became the protector of her mother-in-law. 
And because of her love for her mother-in-law, the seed from her, we have Jesus the Christ which is the protector, the savior of the world. And I want you to remember, when Jehovah God told Peter to kill and eat, and Peter go, oh my goodness sake, I have never touched anything unclean. God already has set the stage for us. Now they had a special diet. And Peter go, for the Lord, it is forbidden to have. I have never tasted anything, eaten anything that is, you know, according to God's ways. But God has a way of doing things for his glory. When we hear people saying, these individuals are bad breed. Whether they're black, whether they're Asian, whether they're Spanish, whether they're from Africa, whether they're from different tribes, it doesn't go with God that way. Kill and eat. Jesus says to him, kill and eat. Meaning that what God has blessed, it is clean. This woman, the mother-in-law, eventually accepted Ruth. And she protected her and provided for her all her needs and care. Who am I to say that your God is not my God and your people is not my people? It is the wonderful dedication of caring for one another in spite of what any tribe or any groups of people would say or any race. Because of Ruth, obedient through her seed, the Jesse seed, Jesus is here. We must be very careful when we segregate people and call them all sorts of names and bring division. Yes, God has ways. Oh, God is love, but his love has condition. You know, sometimes people say, you know, oh, let's be nice to a poor person. But if that person, poor person is doing wrong, it's not pleasing to God. It's not pleasing to him. So we must be very careful when we judge someone because God can use that person. You know, let me, let me give you an example. There are people in ministry that says a woman should not preach the gospel. Keep in mind, Ruth was a Moabite. And Judah and the Moabites did not get along. The tribe of Judah did not get along with the Moabites. But God used Ruth to bring the sea of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. We read up. God's ways are totally different than your ways, than our ways. So when we go in through all this disaster, we hold on to God, the almighty God. You lost your home, you lost loved one, loved one through this time of difficulty, through the flood, hurricane, tornadoes. But God wants you to still hold on to him because he is faithful. God doesn't change. God is love. God is beckoning you to come to him. God is calling you to come to him. Now, 
Naomi push was pushing away the two daughters-in-law and says, no, no, go, go, go find yourself a husband that you could bear children. Go back to your mother, to your parents' house. God is calling you. Through all this difficulty, just like it was a famine in, 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 in Judah, that they moved, Naomi moved to, moved to, to, to live among the Moabites. God is calling you, no matter how difficult things get, God is calling you to rely on him, to trust him during the most difficult time. We see all these things that is happening in the world. We don't throw in the towel. We hold on to Jesus. We say, Jesus, hold on to me. I trust you. I trust you. Just like the Psalm 146, trust in God. Because of Ruth insisting to take care of her mother-in-law, to be with her, to protect her. The blessing went on to this day because of her. Because of her. Beloved, let's be careful. Let's be very careful. When things get difficult in your life, God has a plan for you. Don't give up on him. Don't. He cares for you. He loves you. He wants to take care of you. He just loves you so much, beloved. Yes, in spite of it all. Naomi was ashamed going back home to be with her people. She lost her husband. She lost her two sons. Now she had two daughter-in-law that they were more by but God used that to bless Naomi through Ruth. And not only that, God went further because of our protection, just like God does with us. He protects us in the book of Psalm 146. He cares. God is still in control. The glory goes to him. Yes, it's difficult. It's difficult. But Jesus already came. He finished the work. He says, it is finished. That's why we could come to him. I mean, we, can, can, we cannot continue doing things that are not according to God's ways. But he wants you to rely on him no matter what goes on. Yes. You might say, I don't have a place to live. I lost my home. With the flood, I lost family members. God, don't hold on to God. God hasn't forgotten you. Oh, no, he hasn't. So I leave you with that. God hasn't forgotten you. Be the God that God promised to us through Jesus Christ. Like, like Ruth says, my God will be your God. And if you haven't known this wonderful God and our wonderful Savior, it's very simple. Doesn't matter for who you are, for what tribe, for what nation, God is calling you to be his child through our Lord Jesus Christ. And how do we do that? No matter what, when things seem hopeless, you hold on to that steering wheel and say, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all my sins and all my trespasses. I hold on to you. Be my Lord and Savior and say and forgive me for my sins. Right there, Jesus will come into your life. And he starts to clean you. He starts to sanctify you. He starts putting people in your path. He gets rid of all people that doesn't care about you. And he will put people in your path to help you. And then not only that, but I'm going to put the link on the link box so you can see where you can read the Bible on your iPhone. Oh, yes, beloved. God loves you. And he will help you through your difficult time, just like he did with Naomi. That because of his, her daughter-in-law, she became a blessing to the rest of the world. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. 
Holy God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this moment. I place your people into your hands. And those who have accepted you, Jesus, to be the, his, the, the Lord and Savior, I place them, sanctify them, watch over them and their family, provide them with all their needs, watch their goings and coming, blessed Father, in the name of Jesus, put the shine on their face and give them a joyful heart during difficult time because you are able to. Thank you, Holy God, in Jesus' name. Thank you for this moment and this privilege that you get all the glory belongs to you in Jesus' precious name with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen and amen. May the peace of Jesus be with you until he brings us back again next week. God bless you. Que sea la bendición de Jesucristo te contigo hasta la semana que viene y te quiere. Sabe que está contigo, Jesús. En nombre de Jesús. Amen.